very good morning to you and welcome to our celebration for this third Sunday of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover Lamb has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, and serve you continually in righteousness and truth, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Luke. On that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, <clears throat> and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. One of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? <coughs> They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all of the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary 
that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised Jesus, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within in us, while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The story of the journey of the road to Emmaus is one of the best loved stories of the New Testament. Jesus meets with these two on the road and they walk together. They fall in step and talk. Initially, it is the two who tell the one who has joined them about everything that has been going on. Why does this man not know what has happened in Jerusalem? All Jerusalem is talking about it. How comes he does not know? And yet very quickly the tables are turned. Jesus begins to explain to them. They have seen what has happened in Jerusalem, the crucifixion, but they do not understand. And so Jesus begins to explain. The journey is long, seven miles. It will have taken at least two hours, probably significantly longer to make that journey. But eventually they arrive at Emmaus. And they invite this stranger who has been on the road with them to stay with them. They, in, they invite him to join them. If the story was to stop there, we might imagine that they are the hosts inviting Jesus to be their guest. And yet, once inside the house and the meal is set, once again the tables are turned. Jesus takes on the role of host. He is the one who takes the bread, blesses it, breaks it and gives it to them. That is the role of the host. Once again, the tables have been turned. But it is in this act that the scales finally fall from their eyes and they recognise Jesus in their midst. There are so many things that could be said about this story for where we are in our civic and national life. 
we are locked out of our church buildings. Although as the community of Christians, we are still active. But one of the consequences of being locked out of the building is that we are not able to gather around the table to break bread together. And yet, we know that God is with us. We know that Jesus is in our midst. Cleopas and the other unnamed gentlemen were on a road, on a journey. It was a long and dusty road. It was no easy stroll in the park from Jerusalem to Emmaus. We too are on a journey through difficult times. An arduous journey where nothing seems the same as it used to be. An arduous journey where we do not when we do not know when the end is in sight. A journey that we can feel as though we are making it on our own. With communication with others restricted to telephones and other forms of digital communication. And yet this story of Emmaus reminds us that on our Christian pilgrimage, Jesus is with us. He walks with us and makes himself known to us. We may not be able to gather around the Lord's table in St Dennis's church and share the bread and the wine of the kingdom together. But this story today encourages us to lift our eyes from the arduousness of the road and recognise the presence of Christ walking with us. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world and give thanks to God for his goodness. As we have remembered this day, the journey on the road to Emmaus. We pray for all who are on their Christian pilgrimage. We pray for those who are preparing for confirmation, for those who are preparing for ordination in the church, for those who are preparing for baptism. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks to God for those who have walked with us on our Christian journey. For those who taught us the faith. For those who nurtured us and encouraged us. For those who helped us to see Jesus more clearly in our midst. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are finding this time of isolation and lockdown particularly difficult. We pray for those who feel cut off from their normal communities of families, friends,
friends and church. We pray for those who long for the companionship and friendship. Lord, in your mercy. We pray especially for those who are currently in hospital. For those who are sick. For those who are locked in in nursing homes and all who are separated from loved ones through illness. We pray especially for those for whom funerals will be taking place in this coming week, but family and friends are unable to attend either through their own illness or through the distances they would have to travel and are now impossible to make. Lord, in your mercy. And so we commend ourselves to God's loving care, that in the darkness of these days, we may know his presence with us. Lift our eyes, O God, from the troubles of this land and this world to the glory of your resurrection. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes. And justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia, Alleluia. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns, now and for ever. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, 
working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always amen let us go in peace to love and serve the lord in the name of christ amen Thank you.